G'day guys, I'm Rob Dingledy. Welcome to another episode of Dingle DIY. Now, today we're back in Doug's kitchen. The bench tops and cabinetry is all finished, so we are ready to throw the splash back together. Now, that's going to be a tiled brick pattern. Um, we've been over this before on the channel, but that was floor tiling. It's a bit different to wall tiling, but same kind of principle. So, I'll show you what we're going to need to get this done, and then we'll jump straight into it. First thing you're going to need is a tile cutter. Uh, I bought the biggest one I could. Uh, if you're doing a lot of tiling, a big one is good to have. But you can get these in much smaller sizes, which often means they're a lot cheaper. Uh, we're going to need levels, um, notch trowel. Uh, I've got these side cutters here and nail pullers. These will help me nip out any bits of tile that I need to um, get rid of around power points and things like that. We've got our spaces and we've got wedges. That'll just help us get our grout lines nice and even. Uh, and once we're all finished up, we're going to need grout, a tub and just a squeegee to work the, uh, the grout into the grout lines. Now, uh, you're also going to need a angle grinder with a diamond cutting wheel on it. So now we want to set out the tiles so that we don't end up with any small pieces of tile in the corners which uh, can look pretty average. So then once we're happy with the layout, we can start uh, spreading the glue on the wall and sticking them on. All right, so we've got 1820 uh, in between. Now the tiles are 300 mil, but if we add two or three mil to the edge of each tile for a grout line, the grout lines can really add up and win you a certain amount. Now, you're also gonna have overlap in the internal corners where, you know, one wall butts into the other. That can also help you hide any gaps if it means you can use full tiles all the way across. So in my circumstance, that's exactly what's gonna happen is I don't need to start with a cut. I can just use a full one and then go all the way along and just be pretty certain that I'm not gonna end up with any crappy bits of tile that are 10 mil thick at the end. All right, for our height, we've got 690 and the tiles are 75 tall, uh, plus three mil makes them 78 mil. If we take that measurement, 690 divided by 78, it gives us 8.8. .8, so we know that we're gonna have eight tiles and then the top one's gonna be majority of a tile. So we're happy with that. All right, moving on to our tile glue. Um, I'm only doing a little bit of tiling here, so this is what I'll be using, pre-mixed. We'll just slam it straight on the wall. Alright, these are our wedges. Now I just want to slide these in. And depending on how far you slide these in, depends how level the tiles sit. So it's always good to do the bottom row with wedges. Get that perfectly level and then use your spaces from there on up. Alright, just use the straight edge as well. You can press all of these flat. You want to make sure you get good coverage on the back of the tile near the power points because you don't want to tighten the power point down and crack the tile. That'll be a nightmare. So that's one thing to note. Now I mentioned earlier in the corner, uh, I haven't quite gotten all the way. Now it'd be silly to put a tile in here because we can just rely on the thickness of the tiles yet to be installed. When they come out, they'll hide that gap and everything will be fine. From here on out, it should be pretty smooth sailing. Um, to get the brick pattern, you just want to start with uh, half a tile instead of a full tile. So we'll cut half a tile and slam those in. Now when using a tile cutter, you only want to score the top, create a little scratch, and then get the, uh, the lever as close to the bottom edge of the tile as you can. And just press down lightly, that's all you need. And then you snap the tile in half. Now with your cut, edges, you always want to hide them or put them hard up against an architrave or an internal corner or something like that. Uh, because when these get corked, once everything's painted, uh, you won't notice that they're cut. But if these were butting in to another tile with a maker's edge, uh, you might notice that this has been cut. So you want to hide your cuts where you can. Uh, and the best way to do that is just to have them at either end.
Now once I've finished a row of tiles, I'll just grab a scraper. And I'll run along just like that. That'll help keep uh, the grout lines nice and clean, but we've still got plenty of coverage. things to note here, uh, I've spaced the tiles away from the architrave by 3mm. You don't want to put grout there, you want to put silicon there, uh, and having that little bit of a gap is going to give the silicon a bit more bite, a bit more body, uh, and it won't peel out that way, and also it won't crack because it's silicon as opposed to grout. Alright, so we just want to grab our grinder and a bunch of tiles uh, and just get them prepared for the external corner. Now, we just want to grind away this back edge. You can. You can do an undercut, which means you cut away more than 45 degrees. Uh, and this is what I'd recommend doing because you're only going to see the very tip. Uh, so it doesn't matter if the angle's wrong, it's all going to be hidden uh, and it's really going to help you get those corners spot on. So I'll feather away uh, one of these and I'll show you how uh, it ends up and then we'll do it to the rest of them. Alright, you can see we rolled that back edge away. That's what we want and the cut that was made by the tile cutter uh, hasn't been touched. That way you're gonna have a perfectly straight and square cut. But then we're gonna have a nice mitre. Take your time with these and get it nice and even and plumb. That should scrub up a treat. All right, we're gonna let these dry overnight. Um, normally you can clean them a bit better than what I have, but because the tiles are so small and there's so many spaces, I'd rather not knock those around. Uh, so we're just gonna leave it like that and come back and probably do a bit of extra scrubbing tomorrow morning. Uh, and then we'll grout it and Bob's your uncle, should be done. Okay, uh, new day, same outfit. Now, we want to grab our tile nippers. We want to use these to our advantage to pull out the spaces. Uh, you want to grab a small tool to clear out any extra glue from the grout lines. Uh, you can also use a plastic wedge that you use as a spacer to clear out any excess glue. I've got this white scotch bright pad as well, which can help get any stubborn glue off. part of the grouting so now we will just go have something to eat have a coffee let this dry up a little bit change the water and give it another wipe and then we'll come back and put the grout on the top edge of the tile all right we're up to our second rinse and just before we start we want to clear out any grout that's in the cork lines along the sides along the bottom these internal corners along the bottom up here 
and across the top. That's all going to be silicon. So for the silicon to stick well, we need to get the grout out of the way. a few dags of grout but there's a nice straight line between the 45 degree angle and the dags on the wall you got to know when to stop so this is for me the point to stop we can come back when the all the grouts dry and just scrape off these little bits it won't be too hard to scrape them and we can just be confident we're not going to ruin it considering we just spent so long trying to get it so neat All right, um, we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, we'll come back when the kitchen's finished. There is a few more things for me to do, but I'm not gonna film them. It's just a bit of top coat, more splashback in the pantry, and a few bits of skirting. So I've shown you how to do all that. So we'll come back when uh, everything's painted, corked, uh, sanded, you name it. So we'll see you then.